Hey, Ronnie here for Four Wheeling in Western Australia. In this video, we are going to share some tips with uh, setting up your swag and tents. I'm at Camp Sinclair with Alex from, from Intense Off Road, Harry, and Wayne. They've got some really cool tips that they want to share, and I've got a few tips as well. So stay tuned. Raining, you need somewhere to stand. And if you only have one awning, which most people who have an awning will only have, that's the only place you can stay dry. So if you put your swag underneath it or tent, well then you kind of, you've got nowhere to stand except for going in there. So what I do, if I need the space, I'll get a tarp. And for a little dome swag like that, it's perfect. The water will just run off the sides and your swag's not gonna get wet. Of course, in high winds, if it's blowing a gale, this is not going to work unless you, you pin it down or cable tie it to your swag. But on a calm day, this is brilliant. Another tip with your sleeping bag. A lot of people, when we go camping, I see them, they roll up the sleeping bag and then they roll up their swag or pack up their swag. Um, if I'm out for a couple of days, so it's the last day or night, and I pack up, I will leave my sleeping bag in there, I'll zip it up, I'll leave it in there, fold the whole thing up in one hit, and then sort it out when I get home, or when I get to the next camp, all I'm going to do is set the swag up, my sleeping bag is already in there. There's nothing worse than getting out with bare feet, and then you hop back in, and you've got mud, and you've got sand, or wet sand, inside your swag. It is not fun. I always bring my Ugg boots when I go camping. And the beauty about having Ugg boots is you can get out of your swag and you can go walking around, go for your little nature call, come back, hop in your nice warm sleeping bag. But if it's raining or you don't want creepy crawlies crawling in here, you know, spiders or snakes or whatever trying to get warm, bring a plastic bag, shove them in the plastic bag, roll it up, put a drink bottle on top of it, or what I do, I pull it inside my swag. And then I'll pull it out, put my boots on, and off I go. This is a glow-in-the-dark tag, and I'll put it on my zipper. So if I've had a few beers, a few cold ones, which kind of happens at camp, uh, I'll then go to bed, go to sleep, and then I'll wake up, and I'll have to go for a nature call. And sometimes if you can't find your zipper, and you've got to get out quick smart, these are great. You're just going to remember to shine your head torch on them when you get into your swag or your tent, Otherwise, they won't glow in the dark. You can get these at any decent camping shop. But beware, they wear off um, the little pathetic rubber tag on it, so I've cable tied it, and now it won't go anywhere. This tip is about ground sheets. Wayne? Yeah, I've got a ground sheet under my swag, just to help the swag a bit with um, sharp sticks, and you know, sometimes I've got a few stones a bit sharp, might damage the swag. And um, it's also great for when you're cleaning up or rolling it up. You don't get all the dirt and all the leaves with it. So Harry? <clears throat> yeah, so my, I have a slightly different type of ground sheet. It's a mesh. Um, this is just, I use my tent as well. That's why it's doubled over. Um, the idea being that when you camp in sandy conditions, the um, sand goes through but doesn't seem to come back up. It also lets moisture and things through. So just a different option yeah. um, for different conditions. And I notice you've spread yours out more as that so you can walk on it. Yeah, like, it's nice to be able to get out in the morning with bare feet and stand up and then put your boots on. Yeah. Um, on on something clean and vice versa for when you're getting in, take your boots off and stand there and get into your swag. All right, so this is my swag and my ground sheet. Now this ground sheet here is a bit more the fancier type. It's one of those uh, helicopter ground sheets developed in the um, Vietnam War, I believe. Um, it's very similar to what Harry has. Uh, except for it's a bit more effective for letting the sand go through. Of course, when it's a bit wet, it kind of sticks on it a little bit, but in, in the soft sand, there's nothing on it. It's awesome. So I'm now with Alex, and we're going to talk about placement of swag, uh, or placement of your tent. Well, here's a good option to avoid wet weather. Yep, I go for the stretcher under my swag there keeps me up out of the water, that sort of thing, and there's a bit of extra comfort there, because I've got a very thin mattress in mine. I get a way better night's sleep up there on the stretcher, up out of the wet. 
So you've got a really thin mattress and it works fine on your stretcher. It works fine on the stretcher. So comfortable and dry. Comfortable and dry, that's about all you need for a good night's sleep. Yeah. Well let's go back over to Wayne's swag because he's set it up with keeping in mind of where the water might flow. So again, swag placement. We just saw the stretcher. Wayne, you set yours up and next to this water channel here. Yeah, so before I set my swag up, had a quick look around. Um, and I noticed this little channel and I thought, well, we've had a fair bit of rain lately. And if the water does come down, it should just channel straight off. And... That's right, you in case you can't see it. <laughs> and yeah, it's just a good little tip, you know, even just a slight hill, just to keep that water flowing. It's nothing worse than waking up in a pool of water. Yeah, uh, and avoid the dips as well. Yeah. A lot of swags are restricted to how much water it keeps out, you know. Yeah. If it starts pulling, you, it's not a good thing. And yours is a canvas bottom, so it'll just come through eventually. Yeah. You know, it's wrapped up on the sides. It's still... Yeah. Yeah. And another tip is the trees. Make sure you don't set up underneath a tree that has a lot of um, branches that might come off. Here in Australia, we've got a lot of gum trees and they're self-pruning. So a bit of wind that dead branch will just come off and that's how the tree, well, it self prunes. So, got to watch out for that. And watch out where you park your car too. Still on to where to place your swag. Now, the spot that I got, it's on a slope. So what I, what I try and do, slopes don't bother me too much because I will try and do it so I'm sleeping reclined. So it's, it's like this, not like on an angle. I've done that before. If you sleep on an angle, you're going to keep rolling into one side of your swag. And if you're too inclined, you're going to end up sliding down to the bottom of your swag and you've got to keep moving yourself up. Now onto swag pole or tent pole repairs. And I'll show you what I've done with mine. Sadly, this type of swag, it's a good swag, but these poles are pathetically weak. And five of them have gone. So what I've done is, I've sleeved them now. This is what happens to a lot of the weak ones. They just crack like this. Which is not really cool when you're at camp. You got enough to repair it with. Um, Cause they kind of end up, they end up like that. And then your swag dips somewhere. So it's really not cool. So these little sleeves, this is from another tent pole repair kit. You obviously got to get a bigger one and you can sleeve them with these. Now depending on the arch, where the snap is, like this one here is a tighter pole. So what I'll do is I'll get two temp pegs, put them in each end, and then you bend it to curve it, like so. And then you just get it to the right curve so you can slide it on. Now, it, they are hard to get on sometimes, but that's good because once you get it to where it needs to be, it won't move, and this won't snap. On to another type of swag, pole repair. This is a pretty cool idea because most people will have this material. Go ahead, Harry. Uh, so I didn't have one of your fancy sleeve kits, so I just threw a little bit of gaffer tape around it when mine started to crack. A few zip ties, and then to make sure that the zip ties don't slip up and down, a little bit of gaffer tape over the top of that. And that's been holding for a few months and hasn't moved at all. So I think if you're, if you're in a bind, it's a good way to get yeah. out of it. And that's, that's probably, that would be cheaper than my kit because my sleeve pack cost me about 12 bucks, I think. Yeah. Zip ties. You're going to use them for other things a as well. Buck. <laughs> yeah, a buck, yeah. Probably a dollar worth of fix. <laughs> yeah. Tape you found somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just stuff, stuff you keep in the car anyway. Yeah. If I put a swag on my roof, I'm doing an extra litre of diesel per 100 k's. So you do suffer there. But I was talking at camp with the boys about this, and then Harry mentioned something that I've never ever considered a thought of. And uh, Harry, oh about yeah, the... yeah. So the way I've done it for for big trips is instead of rolling up your swag tight, I essentially just fold it into thirds, um, and it means that it takes up a little bit more of your roof rack. But that's okay in your case; you've got plenty of room. But it gives you a much lower profile. It'll actually probably sit underneath your your wind guard, um, and if you've got something flat and heavy like a table. It's ideal to put to squash it down even further. Yeah, and then just tighten it with the straps and then... Absolutely, just tighten it on with the with your ratchet straps and it should be fine. Welcome to my roof. I've just taken Harry's advice and yeah, it's almost level with the wind guard. This is freaking awesome. Well, I hope you got some good tips. 
Uh, we're just all packing up now, I'm gonna leave camp. And if you've got any more tips or suggestions for another one, put them in the comments below. And uh, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to support the creation of videos like this or the trip videos or the modified videos, go to patreon.com slash Ronnie Dale. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so right here. It's the best way to stay in touch with all the content. Thanks for watching. See you in another video.